evening reader in honor of Milner's exhibit of John Adams that we have going on till the middle of October. And not many people realize that uh, John Locke was placed on the uh, Index Laborum Prohibi Prohibitorium, or the list of prohibited books. Now that list has since been banned by the Catholic Church, but uh, John Locke's essay in Common hu Concerning Human Understanding was placed on this list in 1700, and it was not removed until 1951. So it's sort of an amusing, um, uh, interesting thing that people don't really know about that. So uh, Juan is, uh, Ortega is an ISU alum. He was a history and political science major. And he's going to be reading the relevant portion that applies to the uh, relationship of Adams and the Founding Fathers to their use and understanding of John Locke. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Though God has given us no innate ideas of himself, though he has stamped no original characters on our minds, wherein we may be read his being, yet having furnished us with those faculties our minds are endowed with, he hath, <coughs> he hath not led himself without witness, since we have sense, perception, and reason, and cannot want a clear proof of him. As long as we carry ourselves about us, nor can we justly complain of our ignorance in this great point, since he has so plentifully provided us with the means to discover and know him, so as is necessary to the end of our being and to the great concernment of our happiness. But though this be the most obvious truth and reason discovered, and though its evidence be, if not mistaken, equal to mathematical certainty, yet it requires thought and attention, and the mind must apply itself to a regular deduction of it from some part of our intuitive knowledge. Or else we shall be as uncertain and ignorant of this as of other perceptions and propositions. We are in themselves, which are within themselves capable of clear demonstration. To show, therefore, that we are capable of knowing, being certain that there is a God, and how we may come by the certainty, I think we need go no further than ourselves, and that undoubted knowledge we have of our own existence. I think it is beyond question that man has a clear idea of his own being. He knows certainly he exists, and that he is something. That he can, he that can doubt whether he be anything or no, I speak not to. No more than I would argue with pure nothing, or endeavor to convince non-entity that it were something. If anyone pretends to be so skeptical as to deny his own existence, let him for me enjoy his beloved happiness of being nothing, until hunger or some other pain convince him of the contrary. This, then, I think I may take for a truth, which everyone's certain knowledge assures him of, beyond the liberty of doubting that he is something and that he actually exists. In the next place, man knows by an intuitive certainty that bare nothing can no more produce any real being than it can be equal to two right angles. If a man knows not that non-entity, for the absence of all being cannot be equal to two right angles. It is impossible he should know any demonstration in Euclid. If therefore we know there is some real being and that non-entity cannot produce any real being, it is an evident demonstration that from eternity there has been something. Since what was not from eternity had a beginning and what had a beginning must be produced by something else. Next, it is evident that what had its beginning and beginning from another must also have that which is in and belongs to its being from another one as well. All the powers it has must be owing to and received from the same source. This eternal source 
then of all beings must also be the source and the original of all power. And so this eternal being must also be the most powerful. Again, a man finds in himself perception and knowledge. We have then got one step further, and we are certain now that there is not only some being, but some knowing intelligent being in the world. There was a time then when there was no knowing being, and when knowledge began to be, or else there has been also a knowing being from eternity. If it be said there was a time when no being had any knowledge, when that eternal being was void of all understanding, I reply that then it is impossible there should ever have been any knowledge, it being as impossible that things wholly void of knowledge and operating blindly and without perception should produce a knowing being as it is impossible that a triangle should make itself three right angles, angles bigger than two right ones. If it is, for it is as, as repugnant to the idea of senseless matter that it should put into itself sense, perception, and knowledge. It is repugnant to the idea of a triangle that it should be put into greater angles than two right ones. Thus, from the consideration of ourselves and what we infallibly find in our own constitutions, our, re our reason leads us to the knowledge of the certain and evident truth, that there is an eternal, most powerful, and most knowing being, which whether any one will please to call God, it matters not. In the meantime, it is an over in overvaluing ourselves to reduce all to the narrow measures of our capacities and to conclude all things impossible to be done whose manner of doing exceeds our comprehension. This is to make our comprehension infinite or God finite when what he can do is limited to what we can conceive of it. If you do not understand the operations of your own finite mind, that thing within you, you do not, deem it, do not deem it strange that you cannot comprehend the operations of that eternal, infinite mind who made and governs all things and whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain. This is 